Apparently you break stuff to go back to the eighties. Yeah. Oh, that was pretty cool. Oh, we're back. Yeah. So it was Tales from the Porn back to the eighties. New song? I don't know. It looks like it's a new I song. just discovered I, it and I New to us. I thought it would be a funny song to to parody or something. <laughs> I mean it's 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 really funny, man. I love it. My microphone's got uh, ED problems. Oh, well, they've got Ed's for that or something. I jump on Facebook. I get Hello, Patty on. Phelps. Welcome to the, Hello. Uh, the fray. And uh, to the other people, we see you out there. Ed's we out just, there on Podbean. I can't, I can't see them. I just see well, numbers, you know, PDF. coming up. But uh, 
Yeah, we're back. It's been a while. Um, there was a uh, stuff well, holidays, and then yeah. people got sick. Me, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do the right thing. You know, that's I, fine. We appreciated that here at the uh, the studio. Yeah, I didn't want to come in. I figured we just had it steam cleaned. I didn't want to get my germs all over everything. You know, Bob the Clown who does the other show. He, yeah, he was freaking out. He was like, I'm, "I'm not, I'm not going to come in that place if that guy's sick." He creeps me out anyway. Well, his show's on Sunday, so you know, I don't like clowns. <laughs> don't trust them. <laughs> Not really. I'm kind of afraid of them. Mostly, I just they just don't seem very trustworthy. Well, and the funny thing is, this guy's a Muslim clown. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's that's I like. Hey, that. whatever floats your boat, man. Yeah. Well, I mean that that only so he's a tragic clown. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Kay Hoffman's in the house. It's better than orange clowns. Well, I don't know. They scare me. I don't like it. I like carrots. Yeah. Sweet potatoes. Apparently, if you eat too many carrots, you turn orange. Maybe that's what's happening. That was on Hollywood Squares. Oscar the Grouch answered that. Oh, oh that Oscar. Was, yeah. I miss him. <laughs> was, he, was he dead? Why? Why? I, I have to ask that. Why did? Why is um Sesame Street now on HBO on a pay service? They own it. I know, but I mean, it's, it's they, still on PBS, yeah? Yeah, but PBS couldn't afford, apparently. So now if you're a kid from the inner city and you want to see a show about people like you, you have to pay for it. No, no, no. They get they get uh, Sesame Street on PBS. Okay. But the first run episodes. Oh, is it HBO? Okay, HBO. I see. Okay. So, All right, I'm mildly less. So it depends on how you look at the world. You are getting gypped in the sense that uh, you're not seeing it fresh. I don't think many three-year-olds are, are very uh, concerned about the, the one-month gap or whatever that is taking place there. You know, if it's like complaining like, you know, uh, Electric Factory, I missed the first Morgan Freeman. He was one for a month. Oh, before I, he was a clown. Actually, he was I was listening down. to an interview with the uh, one of the producers of that show uh, last week, um, and he was talking about, like, you know, how they did everything. He was he was an ad guy. Yeah. You know, like a madman, madman guy, you know, uh, and he came to – um to work on that show. And, and that's why they had so many, everything was based on 30 seconds jingles mm-hmm. and stuff. So it was real, real uh, ad agency people doing all the stuff. But I mean, it's amazing company. on the electric company, the people like Morgan Freeman. Oh yeah. Rita show. Moreno. Yeah. The guy who did the voice of Fritz the cat, mm-hmm. you know, they were all on the show. It was a huge breakout. I mean, and, and speaking of that, I was, I was, I was at work the other day and I hope everybody can hear us. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it's going out. I'll, I'll do a little test here. Um, so did I, Kay. Um, the, the, uh, the, the certain TV shows and certain movies had this, you know, this effect and all mm-hmm. these people came out. So you think of like St. Elsewhere. Yeah. Like a huge amount of stars came out of that, like that still are relevant and, and affecting the world today. The, uh, the movie, um, not Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> Fast times at Ridgemont High. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, so so I had a warp. I went right to Phoebe Cates. Sorry. I had a warped sense of of how that movie was. I, I when I was in a when I was in high school. I don't know if it was WMR or YSP. I won tickets to the Philadelphia premiere of Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That sounds like YSP. So so we went down to I think it was the uh, the Midtown or some theater in Center City on Chestnut Street, in Philadelphia. Uh, I, I had, I, I got like six tickets. So I took like my, I took my concert squad with me, you mm-hmm. know, it was my buddy, Ken, Larry, and, and my friend Bruce and Russell. And all of us went down and we, so we went and saw fast times at Ridgemont high. And we didn't know that this movie was going to be a phenomenon. We saw it, it was, this was like probably two months before it hit the theaters for real. So we, we sat and watched this movie and we had this great time and we walked around for the next six years saying dude because we watched that movie and thought it was funny and it was more of a, a spoof that we were doing that well oh know, yeah that's a bad yeah so then the movie comes along and actually hits the theaters and just takes off and we're just thinking we're hypersensitive to the fact that it's taking off like we're just seeing it because we were at the premiere in philly yeah but it, it really was a phenomenon and today it, it still is a phenomenon um, pretty amazing um, how stuff like that happens. Uh, and then um, there's just so many movies and television shows that have that thing that happens where a bunch of unknowns uh, come along and take off. I mean, you could say that about Star Wars as well. 
Harrison Ford became a, you know, obviously a blockbuster, huge yeah. movie star. He made, a, he made a closet for George Lucas and then he became a star. <laughs> I mean, and his first role was in uh, the, the car movie. Um, <clears throat> American Graffiti? American Graffiti. Was that his very first role? I think that was his first big, you know, non, uh, I don't know what you call those movies. I, don't know. I know he was in that. He was in Apocalypse Now. Was he? Yeah, for like the they like a little blip tiny role yeah well lots of people fall in that category you know um john goodman was the uh, he was the levi's guy there was a there was an old ad That's back terrifying. in the early 80s of a construction They'll fit anything a construction guy sitting on a on a on a steel beam hmm. and it's him and it's it's wow. like i watched it, i went i remember that commercial but it's pretty cool when you when you think about things and you know the other thing is that Sometimes you'll be you'll be you know into a television show or a movie. You'll be like, oh, I love this actor; they're great. And then you find out a movie you watched ten years ago. They were in this movie. You saw it. You remember it, but you don't remember them in it. And then you go back and find out they were that character um, who was just a nobody at that time. But that's how it works. Well, Tom Cruise was in the movie. Um, oh shit! The one that was filmed at Valley Forge. Uh military academy yeah um taps no way he was in taps so you may not recognize him because he's pre pretty tom cruise gotcha. his teeth are all fucked up and he because he was the same way in uh he was in the outsiders too and his you know he's like teeth are growing like now five different so ways. outsiders is the movie that brought the topic up that i was i was discussing with somebody at work mm -hmm. that all the people that came out of that movie it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. By the way, oddly enough, I saw a movie for the first time this weekend. I saw um, Dirty Dancing for the first time. Oh, it's a good movie. I liked it. The music does not fit the time frame. No. Well, it's, it's yeah. current music from yeah, the time it yeah. was made. There are three songs that, that come. Yeah. That so so I, w I went, my, my grandfather, um, the year I graduated high school, he said, I want to go to the Catskills. Because he'd always wanted to go there. It was a thing. So he took my mom, my dad, myself, my sister, and then some other family members. We all went up to the Catskills, went to this place called the Neville. Now, do you, I got I to gotta ask this. This is going to sound terrible. I apologize. Do you have to be Jewish to do this? No. You are allowed to be a goy and go there. If they don't have a sign that says you Because I know enter. my next door neighbors were Catholic, and they used to go up to a mountain lake house mm -hmm. in the Poconos all the time. Uh, like, every time I see the show, it's like, like – I, I was watching Dirty Dancing. I'm like, okay, it's oh, they're, okay, they're Jewish. Yeah, I see it now. They had nowhere else to go, but that's but, where they but went. It was the thing. But I was the like, thing it, is, none of that's there now. I know, and that's that was actually mentioned in the movie. So the if guy you, was if, saying it's going to go away now. So it's if not. you watch, uh, if you go on YouTube, there is a, a couple documentaries on the fall of the Neville and then uh, other places in the Catskills like that. And what killed all that was air airplanes. People were it's, able yeah, to fly. The, he mentions it. Places the, the, like Florida. Yeah. And, you know, that's what he was saying. The guy you know, actually people said were just that. basically just getting out of New York City. Yeah. He said he said, like, you know, cheap airfare is, is going to kill us. And then here's the other side of it. Jews were not welcome in most places. I mean, I know it's hard to believe today. No, but I'm shocked. But, I mean, everybody so, seems to be so. Accepting. So when my grandfather, my grandfather had a house up by George Washington High School, in Northeast Philly, and there was a. Uh, uh, some sort of summertime uh, pool place up Bustleton Pike after you got outside of Philadelphia. And, you know, he had the money. He, he wasn't a rich man, but he was, he, he had money. He had money to go to this pool. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it. And he went to go and they turned him away because he, wow. he was Jewish. I don't know how they, I mean, you, I guess you could look at him and tell he was, uh, I'm adopted. So you can't really, compare me to him but uh yeah but again i mean it's like you know i mean that's like that's like nazi like you know they're drawing like the number six like this is what no but this this was all like yeah, yeah, know. you know the the, know. the stuff that that people say people are hypersensitive about today this stuff when we were little kids in the yeah. late 60s and the early 70s and before really went on people it really did happen in this country i always thought it was funny my mom and all her friends they're they're all polish mm -hmm. and they were all catholic but they acted like stereotypic, like like if if you were gonna like say like okay, I'm gonna write down all the stereotypes about Jews. They did. They acted that that way. Yeah. 
And I was like, well, I'm, what's the difference? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know, I mean, my, my grand- matzah is disgusting, my, my so I can understand some yeah. of the problem. It's gross. My grandfather wasn't a, a victim. He never told me this story. My mother told me the story after he had passed away. He, ne- he never, my never, grandfather never complained about anything. He just got on with it. That's yeah. the way life was in those for those people. Whatever difficulties you had in life, you just got on with it. You're not going to sit and cry in your soup over it. Yeah, World War II. Yeah, okay, well, let's just you know, get our shit together. And- yeah, so anyway. So I, I have a bit of that in me, you know. I was raised by people that felt that way. I don't walk around playing my little fiddle. But no, uh, that's what Facebook's for. Well, and it, and that that raises a point, you know. Not that this is a giant editorial, but that's what the show's about. I like, I don't like people, when people suck. get on there and why? I, I, listen, people have genuine genuine things happening in their lives, and and I you know horrible things. Yeah. But, you know, the day-to-day bullshit, you, you get on and you, you, you whine and you complain and you talk about all the bullshit that's going on in your life. My life sucks and this and that. You know what? Everybody's got stuff in their life that you don't know about. You think, And the, and the reason I'm yeah. saying this is certain people, and I, I'm not saying this about anybody I know. I'm just talking about the human condition. People have this they have a view of themselves as being something special and that's, that's fine. We're all special to somebody, but they think that what is happening to them is very unique and it allows them to get on a soapbox and scream and cry and look for sympathy. And that's, that's cool too. I get that too. So I'll I'll tell you a little story. Um, Many, many years ago, I was, I was going through a divorce and uh, I, I was having a very hard time and I had a really, really cool boss that I worked for at a company. Uh, it was a very small company um, and they, they were very kind to me at that point in life. And, and he, you know, he, he knew I was going through some difficult times and I was going through some problems and he pulled me in his office and he said, I want to, you know, you know, sit down. It's, you know, he knew I was, there was some Bad What's the matter with you? Bad stuff going on with me. Mm-hmm. And he said, I want you to know something. There is nothing you are going through that somebody else hasn't gone through. No. Yeah. And just those words alone, it takes you out of that moment. It takes you out of that aloneness, that desperation you might be feeling. And it, it rose me up in some way. For some reason, it, it just struck a chord with me. And I will be forever thankful to him. And uh, he was—he was a good guy. He's still a good guy. I, I Jerry, out there somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I—I I, I could tell you stories, and you'd be like, "Everybody goes through Holy stuff." Holy fuck! But <clears throat> it's like the really weird and terrible stuff you don't really talk about. You know, it's like guys who went to war—they don't talk about that. But it's like you know, it's like oh, uh, you know, like my sister would be like, oh, you know, she stubs her toe, and it's like everything stops and you know right. the drama ha- you know it's like everything's about me everything's about me don't look now, at anything. now at home i whine about everything oh i bitch and moan you vent i mean you can vent but i mean like i'm not going to go on to like, my wife and to my inner family everything is a, is a, is, is the, I get the what's that out. knocking god damn it <laughs> but um but no i mean like yeah i mean it, it's just the 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 attention seeking gets on my nerves it's oh that fucking thing but you know, whenever whenever I, I feel like <clears throat> whenever I feel like if I ever feel like you know oh you know I've had a hard life or lived so that or the other thing and there's a ton of stuff I could tell you that I just don't talk about. So I, I this is what I think about. I am not this kid. I know where you're going with this, and it's I'm not even you know it. I'm just showing you. I'm not going to get it because it's pretty tragic. For Yo me. Ed, but this always bugged me. It's like. People whine about their life. You are not this kid trying, starving to death with a vulture tracking you, walking along right. the goddamn. Well, grid. no, I, it's funny that you say that. So there, there was a guy who used to used to come see the band. Oh, Ed, Ed Podbean must have gotten jacked up, man. Ed many, jumped, many jumped. years ago, there was a guy that used to come <laughs> see the band, and he had he had mental issues. Okay, yeah. but it was a constant, a lot of pain, suffering stuff. Okay. And I turned to him on more than one occasion and I said, do you live in the United States of America? Yes. 
Do you have a roof over your head? Yes. Do you have a full belly? Yes. Do you have a car to drive? Yes. Okay. So right there, you have an advantage over 75% of the people in the yeah, world yeah. right now. I said, now it may not be what you want. You may not have the best house. You may not have the best car. You may not have the best home life. You might even have a leaky roof, but at least you have a platform to stand on to begin yeah. a rebuilding or reinvention of yourself. You can always go back in life and make yourself better. I don't have a genie with a bottle that's full of pillows, and I want that. Well, I saw you sitting on them earlier. I know, but I don't have the genie and the bottle. I just have the pillows. I got I, you. I want that, but you don't see me bitching about it. It is what it is, man. Hello, Patrick. Many, many years ago, I had I had a whole lot of nothing. Good evening. Ooh, wow. Nice. He's got the echo. I think I turned the echo on there. Sorry about that, Pat. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Speaking of people that whine and bitch, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, now. How you been, buddy? He never whines and bitch. He's always happy. Happy New Year. Even when he's not happy, he's happy. He's, he's happy the, New Year, guys. Happy. I'm, I'm actually very happy tonight. I'm, I'm three bourbons in already, so we're good. Oh. Nice. That's why you didn't drive up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it snowed today, and my driveway is a sheet of ice, and I don't feel like falling on my ass. Okay. I, I feel so superior. I came when I was coming out to come to the show. I heard um, some of our neighbors like, and I was like, that's why you do it earlier, motherfucker. And they were neighbors I don't like. So I was like, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I did it earlier, but then we had that, we down in Broomall, we had this like uh, kind of freezing rain thing going on. So oh, all yeah. my cars were like M&Ms with the shell over top of them. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah, we got to like a, was the same. ice on the cars. I just threw salt down after I shoveled and it, it's, it's fine. It's I mean, I drove. Dry, I yeah. drove to work this morning. It was. It was. You know, if you took your time, it was all right. You know, there, I saw a guy who crashed off the road and went through somebody's hedges. But you know, it was. By the way, did you hear that a guy? There was a a, a fatal crash in Valley Forge. Yes, I saw where it happened. It was right by the the. It, uh, it's it's right by Kennedy right? Supply. No. Oh it's, oh. It's down that the okay. hill. Um, I actually worked a, from home today because I didn't feel like driving all the way down there. I don't have that option right now, Pat. That's uh, I was thinking about that today while I was outside shoveling. Yeah, I, I was a little, a little pissed about that. I mean, my I was thinking uh, about you. That's fucking yeah. weird, man. So in, you know, in, in years past, post, you know, we, we had the ability to uh, to work from home in a bad situation. That, you know, hopefully they remedied that at my place because I'm I'm really worried, not just about me, but about people leaving the company because there are plenty of companies that still are doing all that remote stuff. Yeah, uh, in fact, I watched a. Uh, a special on 60 Minutes this past week, and they were talking about the vacancy rate in the office towers in New York City right now. Like that's what, and that's what's fucked up. Like unemployment is so low, although no one believes it. Correct. And 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 you know, it's actually affording people the ability to jump ship. And it is still going on. Yeah, we had a. We well, had a you know, the thing is though that everybody's invested all this money into these buildings, and they've got these these yeah. length well, leases that are really expensive on high rise yeah. buildings and stuff like that. And nobody's the, going into the office anymore. That you, you so could were, you could own a you could rent a storage room and make it into a server room. Yeah, just put exactly. conditioners in there and servers, and you're good. Yeah, we I worked for a company that um, was a Nokia company, and whenever you watch the traffic. In local in the Philadelphia local area, and they have that animated cityscape. We used to do that, and they used to do the traffic report for Channel. Uh, Dude, three. we kind of worked for the same company for a little while then. Oh, really? It was Navtech. Yeah, I went to I went to New oh, York and Philly and Delaware and all over them places, putting them cameras up. Oh, nice. Richard Tickner, hello. Yeah, we I love the place, and we were over in Ch uh, Chesterbrook. And then they got a, a new building in um, – they they put together a whole new lease in a new building in Malvern. And, I mean, it was like – it was like one of those really bad – it was like Google. It was like it was badass building. Like it had like welcome back Cotter like looking – like Yeah, you know, I, started at the, I started in the Malvern office. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it was so nice. Was and alone. we were there for like maybe nine months before somebody came along and said, well – People really don't know where Malvern is, so we're going to close this office and keep Boston and Chicago. The prestige open. factor, and and that's they, they the went to Great Valley too. They, they sold out yeah. the local the local group, and they went to Great Valley. 
Yeah. And, and I got to tell you, the Boston um, office was not in Boston. So it was in, in Providence. It was it. No, it wasn't. It was some place I'd never heard of outside of Boston. You could call us the Philadelphia office. You didn't sure. have to say well, Malvern, you know, so people start thinking about Malvert from student bodies or something. Mm -hmm. And I mean, <laughs> Chicago, Chicago, though, I mean, I went out to the Chicago. Office. That was badass. I was in the Boeing building right next to like um, the Sears. Old yeah, Sears yeah. Tower, Willis old Sears Tower. Tower. Yeah. Oh, my God. We had such a messed up time there. Well, so what what they were saying in this report mm -hmm. was it was going to talking to a real estate guy who has lots of money. The commercial real estate business is based on loans. Mm -hmm. So they they leverage the properties to get more tenants and then they do all this crazy stuff. And um he said, you know, you're you're watching an industry that is forever changing. And you know, these properties will exist. They're not going to tear down these towers. They're going to make them into apartments is what it's going to yeah. become residential living. And uh it's going to be a fire sale on some of these properties. Can, and, can you just imagine like, you know, Paul, I'm, uh, I moved into the 132nd floor. Can you help me move in? Oh, it'd be awesome. I need to carry a mattress up the steps. I mean, we were watching this and they were, they were showing some places and I was like, oh my God, I would, I would kill to live there. Not that I would leave this. If you were single. No, if I, if I was rich, a rich guy and I could have like, you know, multiple properties, you know, like, oh, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a, a place in the city. You know what I mean? It'd be cool. To go to New York, but even better would be, you know, they could do Airbnbs. And in fact, we, uh, yeah, but they build some of those places and, and I'm going to, I'm going to mention this and this is don't get all political. We don't do that. But Mar-a-Lago, I know where that is. I used to live near there. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. What a shithole that's in. Lake Worth is all around it. Mm -hmm. Lake Worth is the place. Well, I do know that if you cross the bridge off of the, the peninsula, the coastal, it gets a little seedy. It either side, yeah, both sides of the bridge. I remember we were watching um, that's we were watching so a, we were watching a documentary. You, and they you said, have to live on the bridge. They said they said uh, we talked to a prostitute from Lake Worth, Florida, and before they showed her, I'm like, she's gonna look like she's 107 years old, have no teeth. She, I'm telling you, I'm telling. You. She came on, she looked like a witch. Well, that's where Jeffrey Epstein was based out of that whole area. It's bizarre. Like I, I like I said, I used to live there, and like. It's really shitty people and then really rich, like the post estate. Am I right? Wasn't his place right down the road? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's it's around the corner. Um, if you, This is you very go, good, by the way. Thank you. you. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for, that was thank a good you for the present. Who yeah. knew? I love that stuff. We're talking about Kraken. Kraken. Kraken rum. It's so good. Ooh, Not the first one. That's uh, what all this is. Over the holidays, I was in the store and I saw, saw rum. And Jim and I have been having this problem. And it's not a real problem. It's a problem. Fuck my life. No, it's. Uh, Let me get on Facebook and bitch about it. Hang on a minute. <laughs> the the um, our my favorite rum is Captain Morgan. Was okay, and they I changed. Would still my Kraken. They they were using a vanilla. Hey, extract don't talk about Doctor Wasn't Hook. made from real vanilla, so they changed it. Now they're using real vanilla, but they the balance is off. It's wrong, and it doesn't taste right. Evil something. So we've right. been searching for a new rum. So I, as I just took a long, you know, shot and I bought this stuff because it looked cool. Oh, Kraken is awesome. Yeah. And I got Jim a bottle of Kraken. So this is my first taste of it tonight. And I can't wait to get a bottle of it so I can <laughs> share it with my wife. It is so good. Love you rum know what else is really good for a nice rum is uh, the real McCoy. Have you oh. tried that one yet? It's oh. literally just called the real McCoy. It's called the real McCoy. There, there's different ages of it. We usually get the white, but there's a, there's a, a brown and a dark. Uh, they're all just aged differently. But the real McCoy is an actually nice, smooth rum. Uh, maybe we I could uh, do a taste testing on that next week. Oh God! Remember last time we did that? Yeah, I know. That was that was a, was that was a hard day. You're doing that. I might have to come over. <laughs> we'll I'm, I'm saying tasting. we'll do it. I think we should all go out each buy, each go out and get two different types of rum. Tell tell each other what we're going to get. So yeah, we so not, we're not. Yeah, so we don't double up. And then do like a rum tasting. I can tell you that I don't like Sailor Jerry's. I like it better than Captain Morgan's now. And I don't like Myers at all. Oh, Myers is no, shit. Myers is, is no, crap. they strain that through I, like a, an old tampon. I thought that, that was is really disgusting. good stuff. So I went and put a bottle of no, it. No, 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 no. And I have it upstairs and I tried no. to make a rum and coke with it. Have you ever had Pirate? It's like, it takes your, your skin off. Myers rum, the only use for it in a bar is to give dark color to something. <laughs> how, about, not, uh, how about Pussers? Have you guys ever had Pussers? I have. It's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's not great. It's a little hard. No, it's it's British Navy issued rum. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, they, they, exactly I usually get different. the dark for the for the, so for the dark and stormies. You know, let's organize this. We'll do this. Yeah, um, off air, and we'll 
Yeah, yeah, Pat, yeah. You'll have to come in. I will. We have more room in the studio now. I don't yeah. know if you noticed. We'll have to do. We'll have to do. We'll, we'll like did we did notice? last time. There's we had like missing. We had little. Wait, what's what? No, where? What? Oh, where? Where's all? Oh, where is it? We're down a Marshall cabinet. What happened? My kid built a, a replica of 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 the Studio B in his house. Oh, nice. So uh, he's he's got a room in his house with LED lights around it. Uh, he's but what a what the great thing that he has is I went over and uh, I gave him a set of monitors. I gave him two 18 inch subs Ooh. and a thousand, thousand watt power amp to, nice. to drive each stereo. Will you be my dad? <laughs> no, I, want, I just want the subs for my bass, man. <laughs> Dude. So we, we, we get this thing hooked up and now he's, he's got his drums in the room. He's got soundproofing in the room. He's got it decorated in all of his modern rock stuff and all of my old kiss stuff. And he, wow. he, he, he is a collector of my collection. That so you've, you've passed it on. Yes. He, he has my Iron Maiden live after death, five foot subway poster. In other words, That's Paul forced his mentality on him. That's all. <laughs> I did it when he was in, in womb. He said, this shit will be worth something. Hang on to it. So what do you think I tested that sound system with? I have no idea. What does every good sound man test a sound system with? I don't know. The greatest sound test song of all time is Back in Black. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you meant equipment or whatever. Well, so, no, that's a, that's a good song. So is uh, Running with the Devil. Another mm. great. Yes. So I, 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 it's a great sonic song. So we, we cranked it up. It, I was blown away. So the monitors that were in here are good, but they had no bottom end. But when you put a good set of subs under them, they're fucking amazing. Now, these JBLs sound great. All by, they don't even need a sub. They're, they're, they're when I used to set up equipment in my house, there were two songs. Um, there was one song I used to Betty always Ann, use. Hello. Oh, hey. Welcome to the fray. Well, we love you at Screwballs, too. Yes, we do. I'm going to give you this so we Betty can Betty Ann, you have to one. call in. Yeah. We, um, Welcome to the shit show. There were there were two songs I used to set my stuff up to. Um, I, I did do it to Dane, I think Danger Zone. Oh. But it's not the greatest, but it was I just that loud. Tune. No. Yeah. So when, when CDs first came out, that was the CD we used to, to demo to customers. That, that's what I, yeah. That's I, because it was, so it was kind of like, but then I always, when I really wanted to do something like, I worked that, in an appliance store. Get that like 70s, days. like really vibe, like heavy metal taken a ride by Don Felter. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. that was, it's very subtle. Cause it fades in and then oh, yeah. it's like got all kinds of cool. Right. Is that that song? No, it's um, hang on. I'll pull it up. Well, anyway, we blew the doors you off. Know what's another really, really cool song when you have a good sound system is that Eagles tune. Um, once you started wearing those shoes or whatever it was. Oh yeah. Dude, that's got such a bad app, bad mm -hmm. app. You know what I mean? Just yeah. such a cool groove. And just, yeah. the note definition is like really cool. Nope. Hang on a minute. I got a political ad coming up. Jesus. Had I've been watching uh, in pieces the interview between Nuno Betancourt and Rick Beato. Oh, it's yeah. Two and a half hours. It's off the uh, hook, dude. If anybody is into guitar playing or into extreme or into Rick Beato, I highly recommend this interview. All right, here we go. This song. There you go. Oh, yeah, this was in heavy, heavy metal. metal. Yeah, because it, this is like a song like when you're a kid and we used to sit there with like the big headphones like these on, like that is how you listen to music, you know, unless you have like stuff like you have, like this kind of like really big, but like just the subtlety you can pick up with this. Yeah. Well, this recording is horrible. This well, yeah, version. yeah, this isn't a great version. It's very compressed and sorry. Well, it's, it's off of YouTube. I know. I'm just. Yeah, it's a great song, though. Really Yes, it is. I mean, I have, I probably, I have it somewhere. Wait a minute, let me. That's a great card. I don't. That's from Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. So, um, um, let me see if I have that. I know I have that somewhere. I want to. I want to give a shout out to your daughter. Uh, She's Caitlin. not doing it tonight, but yeah. Uh, Caitlin came in here on Sunday. Uh, we had an instinct practice, and Caitlin is doing a school project for rec recording engineering, or however it's. Whatever, uh, it. I forget what the hell it's called. So. so she she needed a band and uh and I I I offered up old instinct. We're gonna say old school. Old school doesn't do originals, but we should. Um 
That would be interesting. That would be badass. It would be. I, I have a couple ideas. Shaky and I have throwing some stuff around together. But um um we uh we had her come down and she she got to listen to the band and we have a new drummer. His name is Dean. And uh this was probably practice number five with Dean. Um we're we're gradually breaking him in and we have we have some gigs coming up. So anyway, it was very cool. She came down, she recorded us and uh we're going to be at Montgomery County Community College in the audio st- studios recording. Yeah. I've been Matt booth, Porter's uh, home turf. Yep. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I just want to say thank you to Caitlin. And it was it was really nice. To thank you to you guys. And, I mean, she is really, really psyched. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was a little nervous because she, you know, she felt like, uh, you know, like she didn't want to like impose. But I'm like, well, you know. She has to impose. Do it, it's just, this is her thing. I said, you're going to give them like, hopefully professional recordings of their stuff and they can use that. Yeah. Next, we're going to, you know, bring sick Vicky in. There you go. go. This isn't much better. Richie will say it's not good enough. And I'm not talking about your Richie. I'm talking about my Richie. (laughs) Actually, Rich, Rich, Rich Cox and I did a meet and greet out at a record convention in Lancaster. Yeah, that was cool, man. I saw that. Like they did a nice little, they they did a nice little uh, clip up, you know, a video clip with a song going behind it, and showed a bunch of pictures of stuff we were doing, and sold a lot of merch, which is really cool. And and for a change, it's like wasn't all T-shirts; it was all music. Yeah, which is that, nice. That's, that's what it's all about, man. That's why yeah. we're doing this, Pat. Of course. Right. What about the? I mean, when you're at a show, and that, they sell ninety percent of the people are going to buy shirts and just swag crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when you're when you go to an actual music show, people want the music and they buy the music. I mean, we had a record store buy one hundred and fifty dollars worth of discs just to put in their store so they could resell it. See, and 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 that was the cool thing about the Rick Beato uh, interview with with Nuno. He was talking about how, you know, there's kind of like this void and this starvation of new guitar stuff. And he says, it's not that I'm any better or I'm doing anything. I'm, I'm summarizing, you know, when I say this, I'm not, these aren't his exact <laughs> words, but paraphrasing, he, he doesn't even think it's his best solo on the record, let alone yeah. the best solo he's ever done. And I would agree with that because Flight of the Bumblebee is clearly the greatest thing he's it's ever totally, done. That's totally killer. And and if, if you haven't heard that, you should listen to it. We've played it on the show, but, but the, the point is, is that. Wait, we have a point? Yes. Nice. Unless the the rum takes oh. it out of my mouth. Yeah, well, Speaking of guitar stuff, um, but, you know, he said so, there's this starvation for good guitar, and that's why it's gotten so much attention because there's not a lot of it going on right now. That was my point. So, hmm. speaking of good guitar, my uh, my one of my guitar players, uh, you know, Eric As, he's doing a uh, a thing right now, and he's he's talking with Akira Nagasaki from. Oh. Nakasaki. And he, apparently he has a record company Takasaki, and he's doing Nakasaki. It's Takasaki. Nakasaki. Takasaki, that's it. And he's doing um, and he's, he's doing a guitar thing that's just like anime, almost like the anime metal guitar. And he's doing a whole new instrumental album for for Akira. Oh and he's gonna he's gonna release it. So so Akira is one of my top heroes, as you probably know. Oh, the guy's awesome. Yeah. I mean, there's three guitars in this room, the studio in front of us that are all Kira derived all the X guitars which nobody can see right now because the camera's there. facing the wrong way <laughs> but uh that's because I love Akira I love I, you know I, I'm not crazy about the uh the thrash metal stuff I, I thought you meant the anime yeah. for a minute but uh I I love I love the 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 pop era of of loudness from like 85 to like 90 and then the hardcore Japanese metal yeah. that preceded that where a lot of the lyrics on the albums were actually uh were japanese mm-hmm. you know and and let's be honest hi Rhea. um you know minora nahara is uh not the best vocalist all right i'm just putting yeah. it out there all right you bastard well if you guys if you guys want to hear it just follow our eric as or eric he goes by Eric Az, yeah. His, his last name's some. In the link and we'll post it up yeah. on the page, you know. Yeah, I, I may, I may like, like link it over to the Sick Vicky page so you guys can see it. It's good. I was not, speaking of Eric Az, this past weekend, I was, I was in, indoctrinating my wife into uh, '80s metal from the Empire because. Uh, oh wow! 
you know, that's that's where I that that's was totally that was her thing. My like I started at Walsh's and then I graduated to the Empire. Those were yeah you know, progressions. So I played the Empire and I my band hadn't lined there back in the day. But uh Thin Ice used to play there and we found yeah. some videos of Thin Ice, found some stuff that you guys did uh on there, found some Heaven's Edge. I found oh, that's very cool. Oh, there's really a lot of good material on YouTube. And uh, for people that like Philly heavy metal from, I, I shouldn't call it heavy metal, Philly hard rock there from the go. 80s. This stuff's smooth, um, The Empire Rock Club or the Empire Rock Room was a very famous local venue in the Philadelphia area. Yeah. It was, it was I would call it, it was akin to like Hammerjacks in, uh, in Baltimore. Um, and Sunday uh, all ages, man. I was there every yeah. Sunday. CBGB in New York. Not CBGBs. It well, nothing's been, like that. Either. No, CBGBs was more of a punk club. Well, yeah, still an avant-garde club. Yeah, that but, was the, that was where the Ramones got their start. Yes. Yeah. And 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 Pat, just so you know, Instinct was offered to play there. You monster! I you uh, and I refused uh, to play there because I was worried my car would get messed up. And I don't know why it was a whole rent thing. something. Get a well. Cab. You, you're, you're talking about now mm. logical adult thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we we did the dance interior, which was Madonna's place, which is really weird. Oh, Rich, Richard Tickner just wrote that you know he saw loudness open for Motley Crue in the theater pain tour. Oh, you know, they actually the, had a, uh, a that was my he had a work visa. That was my indoctrination to to uh, loudness. Holy my friend shit. Ken, we went to see you know we went to the concert. He's like he you know before we got there, he goes, I just want to let you know that the first band is going to blow your doors off. You're gonna you are going to lose your mind when you see this guitar player. Yeah. And it was one of those moments in life. I mean, like to this day, I can vividly remember watching Akira Takasaki play that show. And the cool thing was, you know, this is this is the, the you know nineteen eighty five era. He had a a tuner. It was a stereo tuner, and uh, the there was like a an LED V meter of some sort on his rig, <laughs> and, big which reacted. Them every note he played and i was flipping the fuck out on that alone not to mention his playing you know i'm like what this guy's like an alien he's like from another planet it was it's, it was to me it was an eddie van halen kind of yeah movement moment for well, you had leds to it back so, then it made everything here's, more a, here's a here's a piece for you too paul we got to open up for extreme at fubar oh like like all right, before, Pat. Now I fucking hate you. <laughs> it was before. It was right before the record came out. You know what I mean? For uh, for uh, I guess it was the first one. It was the ramen tour. Yeah, the right exactly the ramen tour. But we we got to open up for those guys at at Fubar, and I, I I didn't I had no idea where they were. They were just really cool, and they they sounded great, dude. They really yeah. were a tight band. Oh, when when uh, so so I didn't I didn't know who we didn't have cable. You know where I lived. Right. Oh. We got it very late in in Northeast Philly, and it took my family a little what while. What year to get did it. you get that? I think we got it. I think like, it was like 1989 or something. It was something really crazy, some crazy Holy shit. I think we got it in like 81. Like I, you know, I would go to friends' house when I was going to Bucks Can Community College. I would go to friends' houses to watch the Headbangers Ball or whatever. I didn't watch was, Prism, whatever that yeah. heavy metal video <laughs> thing. Five o'clock. I, I never liked Headbangers Ball too much. It was too heavy sometimes. Oh. Most times you're talking post Adam Carey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It okay. got it got ridiculous. But yeah. in any event, uh, you know that that was my uh, my thing. And uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Have a beer. All right, Black Light beer. Black Light beer from Oxbow Brewing Company in uh, where the hell is this? Um, yeah, Newcastle, Maine. That's what I thought. Um, I like Maine. There's a bunch of this stuff over at uh, Kunda. We wanted to try this. You're going to have to display the color because I didn't bring a cup because I was uh, stupid. Oh, okay. I understand. So what you'll saying. have to show the. the I color. thought you were talking about the black light, but uh, we well, have I black light have on black behind light. us, I think. <clears throat> oh, it's very dark. It's dark. Oh, my God. Did you get? I got a whiff of it the minute I opened it. I have not yet, but uh, we've had I'm, a lot. I'm like, you know, I'm going to have to drink it out of a can. There was some sickness in this place, savage, too. Ugh. You know. <sighs> Yeah, whatever the hell I got sick with, I think it like restarted my uh, sense uh, of smell, dude. There's and so now much I'm like shit going. Around. I'm like Wolverine again. Like I smell everything. <laughs> I'm, like I'm praying my wife doesn't get whatever you had because if she starts smelling again, I'm doomed. I, 
dude oh, yeah. I, I can't I, I won't be able to rip i'm walking around the house like like what candle is that jesus so christ richard tickner says he has some flyer cards from the empire yeah. rich i have i have jesus. up in my attic i have all of the instinct stuff with you know empire rock club pj's red guard of the galaxy uh bonnie's hot plums the velvet all the places we played back in the day i have all that stuff oh my and gosh I was the one that collected it my 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 buddy ken uh was very meticulous uh every show he would come at him and uh, and this guy jim and and they would they would gather all of this stuff including tickets to the shows and anyway wait i gotta get back it's to beer interesting it smells like it smells really good it smells earthy it's smoky It's um, uh, it's on the flavor range of a, of a, like a, a watered down Guinness with um a lot of bitter. It's um, it's it it's got like um, I have something to talk about after this. It's it's hysterical. It almost tastes like almost like peat, like scotch. Yeah, it's got maybe they used a did they age it in barrels? Mm. Oh, it's a farmhouse with black oats. light in a oh. dark farmhouse. Oats and midnight wheat. What the hell is midnight wheat? It's 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 haunted wheat. Mm. It's, it's, All right. It's, so I got something to tell you about. Yeah. All right. So I watch a lot of YouTube content uh, when I'm when I'm sitting in the house at night. All right. You know, when I'm getting so ready for bed, or you know, the, the last right. hour of the night. So I watch and a I, lot. Of YouTube who's got content. the echo going? I think it's Pat. When I'm, when I'm Pat, you got you got something on there back there. Or, you know, the last hour of the night. So, and I, you got something going on there? Uh, and I, yes. <laughs> he, he, he went to go get a drink. <laughs> Pause him or mute him. He's better now. Okay. So, I'm, here, I'm good. All right. So, so, uh, so I start, you know, I've been watching all these videos and I like to watch a lot of history videos. Um, you know, th these are amateur history videos uh, all over the city and the city of Philadelphia. And uh, one of the guys that I, I stumbled upon, he's called the Philly Captain. And I want to have him on this show. You know, like Captain Sticky? He is the epitome of Philly uh, speech. <laughs> oh, man. It, it is. I got, I got to play this for you. Because... Which really, you know what's fucked up is like, I, I, I saw that. Um... And he T comes across T as a doof, but he's not. Tina Fey just Very recently smart. said that, like, her Philly accent comes out sometimes. And not I, like this. But, like, you don't, you, don't, you don't actually, like, recognize it. When I moved down to the area and then came back, it hit me like a brick. Oh, yeah. So he, he starts every video out with, here we go, or whatever it is. So I just want to play a little bit of... Uh, you know, he did a whole thing about the the heroin thing. You know, down in Kensington. I love Kensington, but check want to catch a nap on check the, this guy. Out. You want to take a nap on the street? The best place to go. This guy, that is, fucking guy is everywhere. Yeah, I know. I use that bank. I don't like okay, him. So, Isn't that where they filmed Twelve Monkeys? Probably right there. He's not going to talk now in this video. Bastard. He's just, he has an electric scooter that oh. he goes around. He was at Nick's roast beef last night. He's one of the commentators for the Philadelphia Eagles thing. The Eagles? Yep. He was talking to somebody who was on the podium with him, and they, they said, oh, uh, yeah, we're, we're here for a funeral. That's why we're wearing ties. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> here them. we are, Kensington Ave, going for a scoop. And then, uh, Jesus, dude. Don't run over the heroin I, addicts. We are scooting Oh, with Kensington Ave. Bright and early on a Monday morning, rise and shine. Get Bright your cup and early. Of coffee. Get your, uh, I don't know. Get your uh, heroin. I think you get the gist of what I'm getting at. His, mm. his his accent is very heavy, and he does he does all this Philly content. Some of it's historical, some of it's observational, observational, wow. and some of it's just your Philly leak. Whatever the fuck. Um, but I, I, I think he is very entertaining. Um, he, uh, he lives down in like the fish town area or something like that. And he does like, Oh, where everybody gets murdered. It's, it's pretty cool, man. This, this guy, you know, I'm giving him props. I am, I, you know, I'm, you did that it. before. 
but I really, I really dig this guy and I want to meet this guy. I want to have him on the show. Uh, he's you understand that everybody in Fishtown is relatively entertaining to one aspect or another. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he, he spent some time living in Northeast Philly. Didn't you show a video of him like just cruising around on an empty parking lot once? He does that. He, he goes under the I ninety five. He shows you where the encampments are. He's just a. He's just a. He's a good guy. I lost a contact and lens he over loved, here. Loves Philly. Loves Philadelphia. He was at the car show this past weekend with his mm. grandson. Anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out to the Philly captain and uh, salute. I love his videos. I I I find them highly entertaining. There's another guy I watched named Tom. Tom. Well, anyway, yes. And he he goes around and uh, he'll take you in the backwoods of uh, Morrell Park and show you like yeah that's fucked up bridges that are like in over the creeks and you know if you if you're from Northeast Philly or even anywhere around here and you go on a bike trail you'll find a bridge and you go well oh, that's interesting there's a hey, bridge Ford there rivers yeah what does it do what, what, why was it there well in the case of Morrell Park it was the it was the driveway to the Morrell Estate. So, you know, and this guy goes and researches it and finds out what it what it was and what it's for. And I love that shit. I mean, I, I just dive into that stuff deep. Um, the he found a uh, an old uh, horse track up in northeast Philly, back behind where Nabisco used to be. There used to be a, a, a fair and they would there was a train line. It's still there. It was a train line that I used to play on when I was a kid. Off Cruise Town Road. It's not where the uh, mounted cop busted you. Yes. Uh, that very train line dates back to like the 1860s, the, the 1880s. And uh, they built a racetrack, a horse racing track up there. And they used to have the Philly County Fair there. And now it's just woods and, you know, it's a neighborhood behind what George Washington High cracked School. Cracked in, yeah. But it's just cool, man. There's a lot of history um, that is right beneath your feet everywhere you live in this area. I mean, this area dates back to the... You know, of course, it dates back very far, but I'm telling you, you know, um, continental U.S. It dates back to the 1600s and 1700s, and there's a lot of cool stuff here, uh, and and there's a lot of great content on YouTube from our fellow Philadelphia and suburbanites that are posting up there. And I just want to give a shout out to these people and say thank you because I I thoroughly thoroughly enjoy watching your videos. I get especially info, you, Philly uh, Captain Cat, my daughter Caitlin, yep. and she likes to be called Cat now. Um, which makes sense. I don't like to be called James, so I get it. Um, she she goes urban exploring a lot, mm -hmm. so she goes and, and she she drives all over the area and finds old farmhouses mm -hmm. and stuff, just abandoned places. And I'm like, you know, it's like kind of nerve wracking because you know she it's wants dangerous. To go, well, like there's one place where we over by where we lived before coming back to King of Prussia uh, called Frick's Locks. And you can actually Google this and find some really weird stuff. Um, it's right by Richard Limerick. Tickner, he knows what you're talking about. It's right by like um, the Limerick Towers. Like it was. Is a, this the locks over by, off Phoenixville? Like no, oh, no, no, no. It's not okay. off the, the canal. Okay. Um, it's 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 a it's um, you go you go you drive down 724 towards uh, oh, the power you're... plant, mm -hmm. and when you're at the towers, like you see the towers, like right there, you turn down this road called Frick's Locks, and there was a village right across the the towers, and th th you know nobody wants to live there because I mean if you've ever been there, it's like the steam from the tower is hot, it's yeah. weird, mm. so they abandoned it. But you, people used to go in there, and Pico bought the whole thing up, and now they don't let you in there. But there's some weird shit going on down in there. But, but we had a thing in Northeast Philly similar that where it was called Byberry. Mm -hmm. It was the old mental hospital. And we used to go in there in high school. You would drive the former grounds of the yeah. mental hospital. And, uh, you know, it was full of potholes, of course. I killed my parents' car. And they're probably like, why is the car driving so shitty? And, well, it's because I was running from zombies. And, you know. Why is it? Why is why is there a hospital gown in the carburetor? <laughs> there were some great times, man. We, we tried um, back in the day before it became a haunt. Um, we didn't realize we used to live near... Penhurst, like it was like I could throw a rock from my house and hit it. No, until Bill Baldini did his report. No, no. Well, we didn't live it then. Christ, oh. it was the seventies, but that's the way he used the word retarded like seven hundred and fifty-five times because it was okay. Because then. it was okay then, because you know it, it was it's, the word. It's a perfectly normal word, but people were dicks now about it's it. Not good, but um, it does sound kind of funny. 
but we we um we we drove over there and it's owned now by the military the va yeah. owns it mm -hmm. so like we were just trying to figure out where everything was and we drove through and we got shadowed by a military police car isn't that awesome and I then and then i, I, I did some that. research cool. and uh the east east vincent east vincent were we east vincent i think we're east vincent the police were actually there was a presence there at all times because kids used to go there and fuck around and one of the things they did was there was a gang that one of their their initiation was they would tie a rope around you and lower you from one of the upper levels through a hole in the floors down to the lower levels and just leave you there overnight oh that sounds like something out of uh, stranger things or something and i'm just like no fucking way like like i tell i tell caitlin she goes into these places i'm like look man i'm not trying to be all supernatural like ghosts and demons are going to eat you although they may but what I'm more worried, more there. worried about, like a, a friend of mine, um, his dad had a, a garment company. Basically, all of the schools, like the Catholic schools that have uniforms, he used to sell to them, mm -hmm. right? So it was a huge place. And the place went on a business, and I think it was like six months, no one had been in the building. And he, we all went down like with him, and I don't know why the hell we all went down, but it's amazing it's like you ever see that that uh the documentary like life without humans yes it was like that like six months the building's like wet everything's falling apart the ceiling's falling but what what i when Nature i tell the, what i tell quickly. caitlin is like what i noticed the most was <clears throat> the bedding and needles and the people living in the place mm -hmm. like you gotta be you know it's like my mother told me one day when i was really afraid it, i was um seth Steph's guy um, in the house. When I was like really, really afraid uh, one night, I had like, I was just freaked out by something. And my mom came up to me and she's like, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Never worry about the things that are in the house or in we're here that are going to bother you. It's the people outside trying to get in that you have to worry about. I used to hear that about. Scared the shit out of me. When I was a kid, uh, people used to say to me, you don't have to worry about the the graveyard that's the safest place to be yeah nobody's haunting a graveyard i like to go there i used to take chicks to the graveyard i take my wife to the graveyard of course you did why not you are something else yeah it works <laughs> but <laughs> there's lover's lane i mean uh the cemetery hey i i like goth chicks but um i mean it it, it there, there's one over by we actually went there recently I don't, what the fuck were we over there for I don't know. I don't remember. Um, my wife, Caitlin, and I, where, where I used to live. Um, Lisa Honan, how you doing? Oh, my God. Hello. I haven't seen you in a long time. You've probably been on here, but I just haven't noticed because I'm busy. But um, she, you remember Lisa? She gave us the giant growler of beer. Man. Ah, yes. It's awesome. She's a beer fantastic. But um but where I, where I used to live when I was first spawned over in like Norristown on Forest Avenue, at the end of the street, there was a graveyard. So we went there one day. I don't know what the hell we were doing over there, but I, I drove down there. Because we when I was a kid, we used to play football there. Of course you did. Um, no, I mean, but that that's, you know, yeah. it, they, they were flat. But we, we went in the back, and there are some old ass graves, like going back to like the Civil War. It's really cool. There's a graveyard like that behind my company. Where I work. There's one right up here behind uh, Peppers. I know exactly. Super yeah, old, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. It, and the names are like all the street names. DeKalb. Well, the, well and, there's another one over by uh, by the the old high school. That little that little graveyard across the street there. Oh yeah 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 that mm -hmm. that that one yeah that was awesome. Lisa Honan has to go to an old school show sometime soon. That would be cool. Yeah yeah. When's the next old school show? Uh, it's next week. It's next uh, Friday. Friday the second of February, Groundhog uh, Day. Sure, why not? It's a Groundhog celebration. We'll just do some time travel shit. Yeah. Wait, second of February? Yeah, isn't that next weekend? No, next weekend is the twenty sixth. Oh, the twenty sixth will be at Screwballs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. sorry. The second will be at Swig in Warrington. Swig. It's our premiere at a new. A nice. new it's a new place for us, an old place for other people. It's a very cool place. Mike Lacombe place. plays there all the time. Oh, wow. I've Shot never a seen Southern it. plays there all the time. It's a very big place. It's And they have a pool hall. It was uh, it was something I, I wanted to try. So we're going to go in there. And then the following week, we are at uh, we are at Free Will Brewing up in oh, Ferguson. Oh, nice. 
It's a little three-hour gig. It's going to be a very cool gig. I think we've actually done some of their beer here. We have. And it's it's I've been there many times with with Matt, uh, and Matt Matt's friends with uh, the owner or the manager or something like that. So they they wanted to have old school up there, and they're they're pretty pumped to have old school come in, because um, it's it's sort of a place where they have a lot of like um, Grateful Dead kind of bands. Oh, like, why? Because that's you know it's the vibe. No, but now they're getting old school. <sighs> There's a lot going on. Old School is playing five times in the small month of February, including, mm-hmm. including Jesus, Ribstock. Oh, nice. Yeah, Very we were nice. asked to come to Ribstock. We're going to do the five o'clock slot. I'm going to ride my bike over there. Um, So that that's going to be interesting. Now, I did a one year we did Ribstock uh, was when I had the heart issue going on. That's when I collapsed on stage. Yeah. I Lisa's lost, saying you have to do Sweden. Lost my again. microphone stand and my power. And you kept playing, you yeah. freak. Swedland now. Why well, you got to play in Swedland some more? Sweet the, the firehouse. firehouse. Well, because we're doing the depot now. Oh right. You know, about to get her to go to the depot. I had to go to the depot. I've never been to the depot. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. The last time you guys played there, I had a wedding down at the waterworks in Philly. So Lisa, if you if you if you want us to play at Swedland, tell them. Uh, you know, it's. Walk in, know. put a knife right under their no, chin, just, and be like, "You need to make old school player again." God damn it! You know, I, I'm always chasing them down to get us in there. It's it, and you know what? We've had some of our our most fun shows there. Ow! Ooh, did you just cut yourself on that? No, I don't think I did. Danger! That Danger. hurt like a son of a bitch, though. Speaking of which, but I'm not speaking of which. I got my what my, witch? I got the uh, the the uh, tent in. Oh, you got the tent? Yes. So, Jim, you remember the old tent bag? Like yeah, she's bag, a bitch, right? The, the oh, the, the actual tent bag. Ten, yeah, ten yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I went and bought a pro tent. It's a commercial grade tent, and the bag is about this tall, this wide, and this deep. Mm. I'll show it to you after we're done the show. Nice. It is a monster tent. Uh, ten people can hang from the rafters in it. Apparently, uh, do you really want them hanging? No, oh. but at least I don't have to worry about Drunky Adler breaking it. Well, that's true. So just keep your microphone stands away. Anyway, I'm I'm exciting. I'm excited. And I'm never gonna for, reach for a falling mic we're gonna, stand again. We're gonna start at around nine AM, I think, is what we're starting at on Saturday, uh May fifth or something sure. like that. I don't know. I never understood when they had M three in April. It's too cold. But it it takes one of the M's away. And that's not what it yeah. it's May metal Merryweather. Is that what it means? Yeah. Well, you know, you you, you go. With I, the gates I remember you get. when I first met you. You meant you were like, "Do you know at M three music concert?" You know, I'm like, "Yeah, I'm on the." Facebook I missed thing. the first couple of years. Oh, I missed a whole bunch of years. Now the guy that just joined Instinct, he's mm-hmm. like, he's like a standard there of some sort. Him and mm-hmm. his wife, Earl, just posted a picture, and I'm like, "That's Dean, my drummer." Yeah, I don't think Earl likes me. Yes, he does. No, I think he's mad at me because I I put a. Um, I put a sticker on the back of his hat that said, I have a huge penis. But does he know that you did it? Yes. Somebody told him. Does he know that you did it? Yeah. You don't understand plausible deniability, do you? It's fine. I don't care. Okay. I I did it. I I did it. I'd do it again. Earl's a good friend of mine. He's a good guy. You're a good friend of mine. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. I'm an asshole. A lot of people think I'm a douche. That's fine. No, they just saw that you took one and threw it in the trash. Um, no, I keep them. Oh, they, you can use them for other things. Oh, I didn't, I wasn't aware. Yeah. yeah. And I, re- or I recycle. For pickling or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or right. Distilling. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I got, I, I did get for Christmas, I got breathe still. You did? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. You, you said that you're like, you should get her this. I'm like, I did. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so now we, unfortunately the, um, the instructions are in like uh pseudo Japanese, well, why and, not? Well, yeah, I just don't want to blow that friggin' house up. So I'm like, let's wait till it's a little warmer and we'll do this outside. That's going to be cool. And yeah. the smell will be great. I don't know, man. What's weird about it is like we watch that show Moonshiners. And when they do their mash, they're doing these. Na- I mean, there's like leaves and sticks. and na- I mean, it's nasty as shit. What I they hear do. that. I'm running. I have all my house all the time. But, like yeah, but they, I'm not talking about when you're in the bathroom. No, I don't do that. 
but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do those things. But like, when you make, when you're doing um, just alcohol, you don't have to worry about um, bacteria or anything. So you can just throw shit in; it doesn't really matter. When you're doing beer, it matters. Bacteria will yeah, alcohol. You're just beer. boiling the crap out of it and recondensing it. You know what I mean? Beer's different. You have to, you have to be careful because once you bo- yeah, you boil it, I mean, like if sour mashes, right? Like uh, Jim Cook from um, Sam Adams, he did a sour mash on some show I watched, and they literally took a bath in the work. They 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 got their shit together, and three guys got in a tub and just bathed in it. I saw that. It was disgusting. Yes. And like, and he's like, he kept telling him, we're going to boil it off. It will be sterile. Don't worry about it. It's right. fine. But it that makes a sour mash. And sour ma- sour beers are- <laughs> Your schmegma makes stuff. sour mash. I'm, I'm not <laughs> exactly, big, yeah. I'm not a big fan of I sour. had one down at Nick's. I'm like, I'm going to try this. I took a sip. I walked over to Jen. I'm like, you want this? Yeah, I don't like, like sour. Oh, so gross. Yeah. But like, um, so when, you, when you're making, when, when you, you know, you boil the wort, and then when it you pour it into to wort or not wort wort w o r t wort yeah, to wort or not wort you you pour it into what you're going to ferment it in and that has to be sterile because once it cools down and you pitch your yeast if it's not sterile that bacteria will screw up your beer and I've done that it's nasty uh, I actually wound up one time I fucked it all up and I made um, really good malt vinegar should have kept it um. To put on your chips, yeah, but um, but with with when I watch like you watch a moonshine, you're like it, it, they don't even rinse the shit out. I mean, it's like they just have these 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 things sitting out there, and, and they're just in the environment, nasty as yep. hell. They pour, because they're just getting the alcohol, they don't yeah. give a shit about the other stuff. It's not going to be a problem. So the other thing you can do with it is just take like go get Bankers Club vodka, mm. pour that in, and just distill the, the alcohol off. So, but, um, one of the things I need to do, um, really soon is get some Everclear and make some, uh, blueberry Earl Grey moonshine. Sounds good to me. I'll have to bring some I'm in. left over. It's really good. Sounds like we're going to Dude, I'm in. That'll be, that, 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 that sounds like a show tasting exactly. to me. Like, um, yeah, that's like, that's how, like, how comfortable is that recliner? I'll, I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring my tent and we'll just pitch it out in your backyard. <laughs> by 30 out there well, yeah we just yeah, like you, you bring 16 ounces of that and we're all toast i'll bring i'll bring like a little mason jar we'll get hey, wasted. listen we'll go out in the hot tub until like one of us has a stroke and then just sleep in a tent listen i'll uh i'll take a day off might have to yeah we could i have to we have to make some moon five hours i'll, have to, I'll have to run out to the liquor store because we make <laughs> have to make some movies yeah i can see that <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, you did that one time. Him and I were in the hot tub, and he's doing like he's on Facebook Live, and he's like he's, he's like putting me on the camera. I'm like, I, I don't want people to know I'm here. Why? Well, I, I didn't. You took your bra off at least. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird, but it's like I, I don't. I think people might. Well, you're the one. You say, His man like, boobs were free. Why thinks we're gay? I don't, I don't need give this. A fuck what people think. <laughs> I have a hot tub. I don't care. I can't be gay. I'm not in shape to be gay. I'm not in good enough shape. I'm not I'm clean not. enough. That is true. Is that it? Is that, that's a start. That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. No. No. It's fine. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Like you know, all all my gay friends are pissed off at me now. Like, oh, we're clean and in good shape. Fuck you, Perry. Yeah. That's <laughs> like it's, it's, it's like on that other radio show. Like they were doing a, a thing about you know they were doing a real stereotypical gay thing, and I'm like, I you mean they were speaking like this? Yeah, and I wouldn't do it. I'm like, I'm not doing that. It's like don't. You know, and I, it's like fine. You want to do that? Fine. I can't do that, and yeah. I'm not going to do it if you like. I didn't know you were going to do it because it's me. I'll do something horrible. See, I, I've done that in the past, but I've I've done impersonations of everything under the sun. Yeah, just not on this show. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't want it to be. I don't want it to make a thing. Like, I I have a problem with gay people. I love gay dudes. I hate everybody. That's more rampant toddy for me. Yeah, you know, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, man. I remember when. Uh, Years ago, I was working for um, some consulting company and we had a meeting and about because we were going to go to Sandusky, Ohio. Don't be jealous. I know it's the you know vacation spot of the Americas. But we were going out to Sandusky to do a project and um, we're, we're in the, you know, we're having a meeting. The project leader is talking about all the stuff we have to do. And he's like, and we might uh, go over and stop at Club X, Jim. You'll love that. <laughs> and everybody laughed. I'm like, right, what the hell is Club X? 
Oh, it's a gay bar. Fuck you. You know, so we went to, um, we were going to go to the, the Sandusky has a big, um, roller coaster, like amusement park thing. Yeah. Yeah. We were well, going to go to you that. Know who knows about that is Ed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they've been there and yeah. I was really psyched. I was like, yes, let's do this. And then we didn't do that. Like, where are we going? So we went to a place called Put in Bay, which is in somewhere out in the middle of Lake Michigan. You mean Putin? Pit, no, Put in. <laughs> Not Putin Bay, because you can't have any fun there. Um, so <coughs> you will have fun. Sit down, have fun. Shut up. But we went to Put in Bay. We are fighting the Nazis. They have like the like, Jew put, runs the Nazis. Put in. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That makes a hell of a lot of sense. So, like, uh, most of the time, it's like a family thing, but certain days, it's like adults only. So, we went on one of those days. So, it's this little island out in the middle of Lake Michigan. And so, we took, like, the client and, like, you know, other people that, you know, don't, you know, aren't uh, aren't as um, used to me as you are. So, uh, we go out there, and we the first place we go to, I see a guy dressed in a hazmat suit. And he's got a tray full of booze. And I'm talking to... Um, what kind of place is this? It's weird. So I was talking to a guy I worked with and the, the client. And the guy is telling him like... Oh, the client. Wait, hold on. The client. Yeah, it was the Ohio Veterans uh, veterans, you know, thing. So they're talking and this guy's like bragging like, oh, yeah, you know, I have like... Uh, yeah, I took Taekwondo. I have like a black belt. And I'm like, so I walked over to him and I'm like, oh, do you know this? And I, I hit his back and he's like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, oh. I'm like, oh, sorry. You're okay. You okay? And he's like, what did you just do? I'm like, nothing. And the client's looking at me funny and I'm like, excuse me a moment. Wait. And I literally like slid weirdly over to where this guy in the hazmat suit was. I'm like, what do you got there? He's like, uh, it's a uh, crown royal. I'm like, oh, how much is it? You want one? I'm like, Very much so. He's like, here, have one. So I took a shot of crown royal. You want another one? I'm like, how much is it? Because I'll just keep going with that. It. Ah, thank you, man. He's like, you want another one? I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay. Took another one. I slid back, and the client now is totally freaked out. Like, I'm some kind of freak. Then we go to an we, what? We go, we go to another bar because the, the island is full of bars. We go to another one. And and my boss is very, very scary, like conservative Canadian guy, like afraid of everything. Hey. So we're at the bar and uh, some woman says something to him and he like says Don't something, you know. something to her. And That's I'm like, Wisconsin. go for it, Rob. You know, like, just being a total asshole. So by the time we're done, like I'm completely wasted. The next morning. We, I can't imagine you wasted. The next morning we were getting ready to go to work like in this place. And I was standing out and the, uh, the, the, the exhaust from the car was hitting my leg. And I'm like, ow, why does that hurt? I look down. There's like I'm bleeding. Like there's like sh scratches and blood. I'm like, what the fuck? They're like you walked through that rose bush. Remember? I'm like, oh yeah. But anyway, so we're really, really drunk. We come, we come back to the mainland, and we're in beautiful downtown Sandusky. And everybody's like, so what now? I'm like, are we going to Club X? Come on, everybody. So they're like, what? Royal Canadian. Yeah. And and the, the the project leader's like, you know, that's a gay bar. I'm like, yeah. You said we were gonna go. Are we going? So we went. Yeah. So we walked in. The one woman that was in the group who was the trainer, she, the, she didn't want to. The joke deal. begins. Jim walks into a gay bar. Yeah. She didn't want to deal with it. The boss didn't want to deal with it. The client didn't want to deal. With it. They 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 bailed. But we walked in and like um, this this one guy um, that I worked with was like, hey, you know, uh, I got. Where's I, this going? Well, I'm it trying got, to, it's just, I, I'm just, it's, it's going to go somewhere. Just a give it a minute. Sentence. You don't know how to tell a story. <laughs> so, so this guy I work with is like, Hey man, 16 like, people too. this guy's like, I don't know what he's talking about. See, this is why it always good. Did you do this to me? And then you call me a racist and you don't let me finish. And I look like an asshole. So we, we go in there and he's like, Hey, I, I told those guys we'll, uh, we'll play them for the, uh, the pool table. I'm like, what are the stakes? What are the stakes, man? I did that on purpose. And then we're playing and everything became like innuendo. I'm like, oh, I can't get it in the hole. Oh, my sticks just. But the moral of the story is nobody raped me. Nobody groomed me. Everybody was really nice. 
At one point, I went in the bathroom and I was kind of terrified. Even though they were from Sandusky. Yeah. I was kind of terrified because the bathroom wouldn't lock. So I was like, I, I was peeing with my legs as far apart as they would go. So one so was, the door up. was holding the door shut. Yeah. And, and I came out and nobody I was with was there. And I went over the bartender. I'm like, um, where did everybody go? go? And they're like, oh, they went through that door. They went to Betson's. And I don't want to go. To, and my dad, remember the Lark Bar over in? I do remember the Lark Bar. I never. Very I, famous I drive, gay bar. Drive past it on the uh, the bar the the, the bridge. In yeah. The- well, I remember when I was uh, I, I mentioned the, the Lark Bar at one point. My dad's like, "Oh, I've been there," and I'm like, "I'm sorry." Well, maybe it wasn't a gay bar then. No, it was. He just I just didn't go in the back room. So I hear that in my head it's when weird, the guy because like the entrance was on the bridge. Yeah, but the, you know, my this guy's like, "Oh, they went through that door." And I'm like, I don't want to. I, I it's just like the green door, but for, see today that would be a be a speakeasy and it's cool. And so I went, I went out. They were all sitting in the yard. And everybody's just hanging out. And yeah, being cool. I mean, it was it was it was like you know it was nice and like they didn't have to be nice. We're on their turf. Although the guy that I played that wanted to play pool, Mike. As soon as we walked in, the place was full of women. He owned the Lark Bar, right? No, no. It, he, he he was a guy I worked with, and it, the place is full of women. So he walks in, and says. Ladies, and they all leave. Like you asshole, <laughs> you scared him away. But anyway, I think my point was: don't be, don't be mean. They didn't try to, they didn't try to groom me. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? You start a conversation he like up, that, they know you're a douche for Pete's sake. He ate up ten minutes of time, yeah, so you it's know, all good. <laughs> Whatever. I did have some news I wanted to mention, though. Oh, please, by all means. First off, Fruit Stripe gum is being discontinued. Why? I don't know. There's no reason why. It just is. So if you find it anywhere, grab it because the shit is not being made anymore. What am I going to do with it? Save it forever? Save it forever. That's the problem. If you you save it for more than six months, it turns into a brick. It doesn't even matter. You chew it for 15 seconds. It doesn't have any flavor. So I will will say this. You you know in the other room, in the bar, there's a... Kiss M and M's, right? I did not know that. I have the Kiss M and M's display case, and I was going to say because, like, if you have Kiss M and M's, I don't want to know, but I would never go near that. They're, they've been there for like eight years. I, I got. I'm just assuming. So, that, yeah. so a few weeks back, uh, I, I didn't advertise, but I went to Vegas and we went to the Gene Simmons Museum. He has a museum. Yeah. Hmm. So there, there's a there's a, uh, a there was a, a Kiss Museum and golf course at the Rio Hotel years and years um and uh gene when he sold his property in la in where in la oh do you remember the gene simmons you, you, show? You're, uh, in la I, I got a frog in my throat i was gonna say do you remember the gene simmons television show that he had vaguely his family? Yeah. yeah so in in that show you would, he would take people in his office and he'd like the pinball machine and condoms and all this he took all that stuff out of his house and moved it to the kiss Golf course, oh, mini golf course in Rio. So for twelve ninety five, <laughs> you can go in and tour it and see all his so tchotchkes. On the nineteenth and eighteenth hole, if you get it in the little cup, you get a condom. I don't. So so Nance and I went, and and they had to kiss M and M's like I do, like they had old M and M's still in a bag, and uh, it was kind of cool though because there was a lot of stuff in there, you know, that you don't get to see. It, it's stuff that he had at his house, and oh, Pat dropped anything that um, anything that people pitched to Paul and Gene for marketing. He kept a copy of yeah. it and put it in his the cash disposable douche, whatever it was, yeah. you know, you know, and and what people don't realize is that anything that's marketed with a Kiss logo. The first person that, and the ultimate person that makes the decision on whether that happens is not Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons is the talent. Paul Stanley is is it's just, it's Peter Chris. He has he's, he has control over everything. Peter, Peter has no control over anything, <laughs> unfortunately for Peter. But uh, Paul is the guy. Uh, but Gene, you know, he 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 gets a kick out of all this stuff, and he so he saves it. And I mean, they had everything there. They had like his high school diploma. His oh college God. degrees, like any. I dare that, you to make that sound again. I know that was weird, <laughs> but you know, it was cool. And uh, I took a lot of pictures. I'll show them to you at some, some point. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we had a good time. We were laughing, like walking through and seeing all this stuff. 
like stuff from his fucking house. It was just, it was weird. These are the curtains he used to hang over my kitchen sink. It, it, it was literally like stuff like that. Like his, his desk from his office from the TV show was in there. Yeah. And you could put on his boots and sit behind his desk. And I was like, I'm not putting any boots. Yeah, on I'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you, you get trench foot. But uh, it was it was it was a neat thing. Um, I it was definitely you know like we we go there usually like every other trip to Vegas. We we'll, and we Nancy and I've been about nine times. Um, we'll go and play miniature golf there at you know the Monster Golf Kiss Course. Um, Do you have to play in high heels? No, it's just regular. Hmm. You know, some people play in high heels. I would yeah. say, yeah. Unfortunately, Rio is a shit show right now because it got sold. Caesars had control of it, and they sold it to a private investor. Where is Reno? Rio. 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 Wow. Uh, it, it was a very popular place about 25 years ago. Penn and Teller do their show from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, It was a cool place. They had, like, these overhead gondolas that would come out, and girls would throw beads off. It was like a, you know, Mardi Gras thing. Oh, you don't thing. have to work for them? So, uh, but but right now they're they're gutting the place and redoing it, so it's a mess. And you know, we got there at like eleven o'clock in the morning, and there was nobody there, and it was it was unpleasant. Mm. Um, yeah, we we stayed at New York, New York for the first night, and we had a killer room. We had a, what they call a uh, a strip view, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a corner room. We saw strippers, so we had. Two sides, we could see the front strip and we could see uh, Excalibur on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we ended up not staying there. Nance and I weren't happy. It, the room was beautiful. It was, it was a you know brand new room, but we always right. stay at a place called Vidara, oh, okay. which is part of the Aria uh, Hotel. So we, we transferred over to Aria hmm. uh, Vidara and stayed there and uh, lost our comps. Oh, what they, were, the hell? they comped us free nights, but uh, my dad has. I used to have tons of comps. Like it's ridiculous. Like if we go down there, they, just... they did do us proper. We paid a hundred bucks a night for the hotel room. Now, like I just watched a mm. video from people that I watch in, in Vegas. I watch a lot of Vegas YouTubers, and they stayed in a simple room in New York, New York. It was three hundred and fifty six dollars for one night. Mm. So that's yeah, almost like Wildwood. Now we spent that for three nights, and uh, you know. Thank you, MGM. We had a we had a great stay. It was good. I I, got, I had a cold though by the second mm. day, so that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, that was like my New Year's Eve. Yes, my New Year's Eve was. I'll give it a big okay. You got the gig, yeah. Yeah, mm. it was just the crowded. Yeah, you know, but only like for the twenty minutes leading up to New Year's and the fifteen minutes after. And after that it was just people just bail, man. They just yeah, don't want to deal with it. Yeah. And it wasn't as crowded this year. And I'm not going to say where it was because I don't want to, you know, bad mouth anybody here. Uh it wasn't as crowded. Not I don't mean for the band, but in general, uh there wasn't as big a crowd this a year. A lot of people didn't go out. Yeah. The, I think was there was this you know, people were freaking out about RSV or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I just I was I just remember that night, I was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> and then New Year's Day, I was like, oh, God damn it, I'm yeah. sick. And, and of course, I was off that week. So whenever I've taken vacation for the last many years, I wound up getting sick the first day. That's not fair. And I'm like, you know. Well, that's, like, that's like us. You know, we, we, we were out in Vegas, and I start getting sick. Yeah. You know, And it started when we were at the Sphere. We were watching that they have some movie they show, and. <laughs> we're sitting there and now I'm going to yeah. have phantom call. <laughs> um, and I, 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 my nose was like running and I'm like, what the, you know, with the first time it happened to me on vacation was not fair. Like I remember when, when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager, we were out one night and I had a really bad like stomach thing going on. So I, we went to Wawa and I got a thing of Pepto and I was just sipping that all night. My friend's like, why don't you just go home? I'm like, fuck it. It's Saturday. Yeah. But we, the first and only time I went on a cruise was a Disney cruise. And I got sick as fuck. Oh, that's not fair. And I couldn't sleep. So like every night I would, you know, the wife and kid would go in the room and go to sleep. I'd go out on the deck and just sit in a chair or walk the deck. Like all, I mean, it's not much like not, not so much different than what I've been doing for the last week. I'm not sick anymore, but like, mm. I just keep I like today. Can't, I get up, can't get rid of it. I got up at three 30 waiting to see if the kid needed a ride, took her to work, came back, sat around like the you know, fucking exhausted. I went to take a, a nap, you know, like during my lunch break at uh, 
two o'clock, mm-hmm. went into my bedroom, like threw myself down the bed, but the wife had to get ready for work. So I got up and I went back into the spare bedroom and I just laid my head down on the foot pad that I lay used. your head. I literally on laid the on the floor. Foot I just, pad. I needed to just lay the hell down and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm exhausted. That sucks, man. Yeah. It sucks. Cause like yesterday, I really, yesterday I was off. Well, it's Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. Yesterday we were off and I just like, okay, I, I don't care. I'm going to sleep in on Monday. I'm going to sleep as late as I possibly can. I don't care if it's the afternoon. I'm going to sleep. Mm-hmm. Nope. I was up at uh, 6 a.m. And I was after laying there for like 90 minutes. I, I don't know what's going on. Not like I'm stressed. I just wake up. Hey, and I you know, sleep. It's just the way it goes sometimes, right? God hates me. I don't know. No. God loves you, Jim. Why? Why yeah. would he? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this thing I wanted to talk about real yeah. quick. Have at it. So a woman in Florida... Oh, Florida. And yeah. we, we need to start doing the Florida news again because there's a lot of it. Woman in Florida literally sued yeah, my mom come on. Jeez, sued so. Hershey because the peanut butter cups I heard about this. Did not look like the pumpkin ones it visually didn't have did, a face. It visually did not, yes. And she's suing was it five million dollars, I think? Yeah. It's... Yeah, five million dollars for like like that burned her. Like Jesus Christ. I mean, you could, you could rape somebody and it only costs you $5 million. Apparently. Opportunity I mean, knocks. What the hell? I mean. Hot coffee. Well, that's a, You know, they tried doing that shit, that exact hot coffee thing in the UK, and the judge laughed it off. And because he, he said, what like. Is, what is it called there? What? What is the law there? What do they refer to it as? Uh, I don't know. Common law. Oh, based on okay. common sense. Well, yeah. Well, that's, I don't think it means that, but it should be. Yeah. I believe that's. The I mean, point. I mean, it, you know, we had the law here is a fucking nightmare. I mean, all you got to do it is. It takes 17,000 years to get anything done. And then yeah, people think. Un- it's unle- a, unless you're poor. And then people think that there's a conspiracy. Why? No, that's mm. just the wheels of justice. They move very slowly. It just takes time. So I, I mean, I've been on that side Justin where, took time where too. like my family's had someone that's, you know, getting in trouble and they're going to jail and you say that whole thing like, oh, the, you know, the lawyers is doing it because they want to be in the, it's the same thing. You just, you always bad mouth them. They're just, they're just doing their job. If you're not guilty, you're not going to be guilty. If there's doubt, there's doubt. If you get busted, you get busted. If you don't, you don't just believe in the courts for fuck's sake, please. Otherwise everything falls apart. And then I'm going to have to move to Ireland because it's my only option. The wife can, she has dual citizenship. We can move to Ireland. Well, then, you know, that's fine. I guess. My, I don't know how Kay, we're going to do Caitlin was just like, well, is there anything the to do there? That way, it's going to be a little complicated. <laughs> that's the first thing the kid said. Is there anything to do there? I'm like, you like sheep? Do you like Guinness? Yeah, I'm like, if you drink or like sheep, <laughs> there's tons of shit to do. But I don't know. Yeah, man. So we got three minutes, man. I What's know. going on? Uh, this weekend, there's nothing going on for me, personally. But uh, uh, next weekend, I'm gonna go. This is the, the rundown is uh, pretty lengthy. Let me mm-hmm. let me get my calendar okay. up okay. here. Hello, Kitty Cat. We're just about to go off the air. I apologize. You just jumped in the room, and oh, we're we're gonna be tune in next week jerks and, and uh, we, East Coast time. Get dial in around seven thirty. Yeah, we end around nine o'clock Eastern because we uh, we have. I would say we. I, I almost want to say we want to go get some sleep, but. You're going to do a bunch of advertising stuff, and I'm going to go home and drink more. So See, that's fine. That's what we do. So uh, Friday, the 26th of uh, of January, mm-hmm. at Screwballs, old school, we'll be back again. Yeah. Finally. And then February 2nd, we'll be at Swig in Warrington, Pennsylvania, making our debut, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back. And then February 9th, we're at Free Will Brewing. In Percocy, Pennsylvania. This is old school rocksphilly.com. And then the 17th of February, we're at Nick's Woodhaven. And then the 23rd, we'll be at the depot. In, uh, nice. Yeah, so you'll have to go to that show. I gotta, I've got to go to that, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I don't have a wedding or a funeral or... Well, hopefully, everything's fine. Something insane that and, comes uh, up. And then and then uh, March is still in the works. Uh, and then uh, there, there's... there's potentially going to be an instinct gig on february 25th oh and also instinct will be at ribstock on february 18th uh at 5 p.m at the rib house so uh we have that all going on so we're very happy about that 
the hell, Pat? Where'd you go? I had to run pick up my Need son from work in the grocery store and grabbed a couple of things. So I figured I, while I'm waiting for him, I'll get back on. Fine. Now that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's acceptable. I got to do so family stuff every once in a blue moon. 60 seconds. Pat, you got anything going on? You and sick Vicky? Um, actually, it's pretty quiet. We got it. We have a show coming up with Whiskey Grin in uh, at the Union Firehouse. They're shooting a video, and guess what? It's a free show. Yeah, I saw that. That was very cool. Nice. That's going to be in February. I wish it was all ages. We were trying to do like a, an Empire Sunday thing, but uh, there's too many legalities because it's a bar to start with. You know what I mean? In order to work all that out, so it's it's not an all ages show, unfortunately. But uh, no, we're just we're shopping for shows right now. We're working on a new record. We got you know we got our, our buddy in from Australia who's going to uh, engineer and produce for us. So it's it's really it's a pretty cool thing going on. Nice. So we did our little record show this weekend, which was a lot of fun. We sold a lot of stuff. You know, I was saying earlier, you know, people bought music rather than shirts for a change. You Normally, you're at a show, everybody buys shirts and swag. We're at a music show, and everybody buys music. Go figure. Nice. Yeah. So you got anything else going on over there? No. All right. So. All quiet on the home front, man. Just to ch I, I actually, I picked up a new little box. I'm going to have to bring it over next time I'm up and let you check it out. It's a it's an off-market MVAV multi-effects unit that I'm using for my bass right now, which actually, for 35 bucks is absolutely killer. <laughs> Wow, nice. Damn Chinese. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds very it's Chinese. Totally Chinese. Yeah, it, was, it, was a, it was like $100. Like I had 90% off on Timu or something like that, and I grabbed it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's where, that's where I get most of the ones I have. It just sounds right. great. We, I rehearsed with it for the first time the other night, and it was it just sounded really good. I was happy with it. Jesus Christ. A hurricane over there? No, it's just a light breeze. I walked outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's All right. the microphone sensitive, I guess. I guess. All right, so we're out. So we're out. Uh, old school next Friday. Yeah, and, baby. Uh, we'll be back next Tuesday at 730 Eastern. And Kitty Cat, hope to see you there. And, uh, yeah, Pat, thank you. Thank everybody else for jumping in. And we'll do it again. Sounds good, man. Word. Peace old out. Halloween. Catch you guys. Rockbilly.com, bitches. <laughs> All right. Good night. Have a good one.